Hello, it is Brother Cloud here, and I'm doing a, another Dark Souls series. Uh, the last one was... it was pretty bad. Uh, I didn't really know what I was doing. So this time... the idea of this one is... Uh, to say people haven't played Dark Souls 1, they want to do it quickly before Dark Souls 2. Though I don't recommend it, I recommend exploring the game, playing it solo, not going online and spoiling it, but you know, some people just want to bang it out, see what the deal is. So I'm making this run. Uh, pick what I've picked here as well for it. Follow if you follow this run, you're guaranteed to uh, well, it's quite easy, it's quite easy as sorcerer. If you go as like a knight at the start, it can be uh, it can be quite difficult. So uh, I say the reason I did that, but the reason is if you got to learn the patterns of the enemies. You got to be more focused. You got to use your stamina more wisely. So we go, we go with sorcerer. We go, we go with OP, OP sorcerer. The familiar rattling sound in the background of my videos will. Uh, well, I don't have any ice, so no rattling sounds for now. Right. So yeah. Uh, Another reason is because there's a couple of people I know that play Dark Souls and uh, they've only just started playing and they want to know a few things uh, so, so <coughs> I will go for main the main things like Firekeeper Souls to upgrade your healing potions, your Estus Flask and uh, you know weapons and stuff my stat scaling <coughs> you don't have to follow it 100% um, and you could probably do better dodging arrows than me, but the stat scaling at the start is for so I can use the halberd because the first weapon I'm gonna make it a magic as kind of not as quick as possible, uh, but I'll get the gold ring first so I can farm better because farming is it kind of sucks. So um, I'm picking the halberd, which is 16 strength and 12, 12 dexterity. Uh, but it's for PVE, not this run is not for PvP, it's just PvE. Uh, and you don't have to kill this guy, you can listen to him. I just felt bad. My soul sort of died when I killed him. Um, yeah, so the halberd's good for PvE because it's got a long range. But you might find a better weapon, just... Like I say, this is a guide. Find a weapon you enjoy using and, uh, you know go from there really. I mean I picked the S stock up near the start because the dagger sucks. Because it's a dagger. Uh, but this this run won't just be about how I play and where items are and stuff. I might go through a bit of Dark Souls lore. Because the thing about Dark Souls is I like you know searching around but Many people know the story is done through the item descriptions. So, you get a lot about the lore of the game through the stories. Now, this guy, uh, if, you d if you double handed and you drop and you press RB, you do more damage. So, you want to kind of it's a trick that they show you here and you can use on the second boss. Now, these bosses, as far as I know, you know, the tutorial, under the tutorial boss is the boss that looks identical to him, which is quite a lot harder. But you get a titanite slab. We won't be needing that in this game, but if you have a particular, like the armor I choose as well, you don't have to use the armor I choose. Um, and actually, I miss out on a good, well, actually it's a skirt. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, but uh, I miss out on the skirt um, because I get a different item instead, but it's better. Well, Trex ring basically, I get it at the start instead of waiting later on, but then you can't get the uh, Firekeeper, Firekeeper Woman's skirt, so. So first I'm going with the strength and dex and then I'm pretty much going intelligence. Um, if you get Havel's Ring, you don't have to worry about endurance for a long time. Uh, stamina, you should upgrade now and then, and HP. But I've kind of gone. I'm not even that good. 
I'm not amazing in this game, so like rolling and stuff. So I haven't gone with much HP. Now I'm going this way because there's a few decent items you can get. Now consider this a suicide run. I got 36 souls. It does not matter if, if you die. If you die, it does not matter. I die. So I cut out the deaths and the loading times just because it's boring. Not because I'm like, oh god, no, I don't want to see people die. I die. Dark Souls is about dying. So there's the S-Stock. That's a good weapon. For now, anyway. I mean, I don't like it for later on. I just use it for the literally the first bit of the game. That's an item for later. So you can attack ghosts. But talk more about some of the items later. Like I say, I'm picking up things. You can pick. You don't need that now. You can just pick it up later. What I'm getting now is a firekeeper soul, and a firekeeper soul upgrades your Estus flask, which is damn helpful. And if you're deciding to play co-op, uh, then it's an even more helpful item because it heals your co-op partner which like healing your co-op partner doesn't heal them that much and the host has to do it so so here usually you die I usually die here all the time it's only the last two goes I've actually successfully done that so and then I'm gonna go to another place to get a soul and a humanity and if you're good enough and you you stay alive you can get a brigadier set and a ring a red tear stone ring though to be honest, I mean the Red Tears Stone Ring we don't need and the Brigadier set is alright but it's nothing amazing. So yeah, this the dragons here, the, I mean the the thing is right, bosses scale the same, same as you like on your level if you know, if you know what I mean. So they can't really ever one hit you. I don't think they can actually ever one hit you full health. Uh, but like these sub bosses can like this dead dragon hanging off the hill He can he can one shot you With a swipe so you gotta be careful of that, but if you pick you only need the proud knight soul here You don't need the sword uh, magic sword a story straight sword and The shield a shield yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a shield there as well, but if you grab the soul he doesn't wake it also You can actually there's a little there's a little ridge top of the right screen there and you can you can actually before the dragon you can run around it so you're completely safe but he won't wake up if you pick that one item up but if you pick the other ones up he will wake up and he probably will kill you see here you can beyond this blue dragon you can keep running and you go left over the bridge and you can get some extra items and then you can go off a ladder but I wanted the humanity but I died here oh no what okay shit I don't die here. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember how I die now. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, you run down here, and there's that item. There's a brigadier set, and further on is a ladder, top right. But look at this. Yeah, skills to pay the bills. Yeah, it wasn't done too well. <laughs> so, I usually talk about utter bollocks when I, when I do these uh, commentaries, but... I can't think of anything or anything funny to say. You want these fire bombs for Taurus Demon. Well actually, there's a few ways. Taurus Demon, you can just constantly run up the ladder, drop down, attack. This, I mean, you want these. But the next bit I do, you don't really necessarily need the items. It's just more like, here's a few items you can get. You can speak to that guy and join the Way of the White Covenant, which helps with co-op. And he also gives you a coin. And he sells a few miracles, but that's if you're a faith build, and we are not a faith build, we're a mage build in this. <laughs> obviously you can build whatever character you want, but if you follow this, you obviously uh, it's not going to apply to your character, so you can't really follow this. I probably didn't need to say that, but there you go. Hmm... I watched Watford at the weekend. They actually won a game. Watford is a real place as well. It's quite quite funny. Uh, some guy was like, "What Watford?" I say, like, "Yeah, Watford." Oh right, never never heard of that place. Yeah, what Watford? 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 What? Say Watford? <laughs> no, no. So here, there's a couple of weapons here that really you 
don't want you, you, the Zui hand is cool uh, I've probably pronounced that wrong I really couldn't give a fuck so it's a cool weapon it's strong uh, it's heavy it's fuck if you miss it you are screwed here you can actually run away but I got I got destroyed oh yeah dead I can be asked to edit out those two deaths they can just stay there up the stairs though if you keep going around a bit of a wall there's a there's another soul but I don't do I get it? oh okay do I, I swear I didn't bother getting it okay wow I like triad yeah here it is they're not that handy I mean they're, they're handy for now but like new game plus and stuff they are they are utterly useless I think I probably yeah I probably use them more now level up a few more times yeah nice thing about Dark Souls 2 is you can just select use and then a number whereas in this one you have to individually use the souls it's kind of annoying you have to select them as an item as well I think oh, I'm pretty sure you do So the Proud Knight was like 2,000, which is nice at the start. There's a, there is another method you can do at the start of this game, which is quite easy. You can use a humanity, turn human, go down to the catacombs, and summon Leroy and fight Pinwheel. And you get like 10,000 souls, but then you can upgrade... Uh, you, can, you can use your fires. You can upgrade your fires so you can get like up to plus 20 flasks instead of plus 10 because you're capped at 10 until you get the right of kindling so I mean it's kind of, yeah, it's alright depends if you're getting really really stuck but for me you don't really need over 10 flasks until later and you don't really need to be wasting humanity I mean humanity I mean if you're not playing co-op humanity is really only used for if you want to open up the slayer the sh shortcut to save him or well, there's a few ways of saving him or uh, or if you want to turn human and then summon an AI bot like Solaire or Leroy, Night or Trek, Beatrice, yada yada to help you. See this weapon's pretty strong against the starting ones. And it's quick. Has a cool right trigger. Other than that, it is more of a parrying kind of PvP weapon. I don't know, I don't really use it, so I can't really say. <laughs> this is funny, though. I don't think I've ever been poisoned by this rat. And it fucking gets me good. Luckily, I get to the fire. So, this is the opening bit of the game. You shouldn't really... I wouldn't farm here, but I mean... I farmed here when I first played. But it is a really bad spot and I will Here's the thing. The way I'm doing this, you need to save 20,000 souls to get the uh crest. The uh Arturus crest for basically a really uh pardon me, a really easy way of leveling up. That's what we want to do here. That's kind of the the goal is like a quick version of Dark Souls. A quick but not a speed run quick because well you well there's no point. I mean there's I mean I like speed running games, don't get me wrong, I do with Halo and Final Fantasy, but you know you're not gonna pick this game up for the first time and be able to speed run it, let's put it like that. See I explore this area, but really did I need to? Nah. There's a humanity here. Which is kinda nice. But I do do a li I do do I do, do fucking do do everywhere. I uh, do do a bit of co-op later on, uh, but that's probably about the only time I'm going to do co-op in this because this game sucks ass for finding people that you want to co-op with. It's not. It's much easier. <laughs> well, is it much easier? It's much easier in Dark Souls 2 if you want to co-op with someone. The problem is it tracks your souls that you've gained throughout the game. 
So basically, you have to be within 50,000 souls. And me and my mate were within 10 levels, but he had almost double my souls. Because he was just buying loads of shit, and he, he just played like 20 more hours than me, to be fair. But we don't have... We don't have time. I mean, people... There will be the hardcore Dark Souls fans who will just bitch, like, little bitches about how this game should just be solo. But there's a co-op option, which means you can co-op. In Dark Souls 2, the, the, the soul level limit thing is, is awful. It's, and we don't have time to play the exact same time. I mean, 50,000 souls, that's like potentially a boss, you know. And he's probably played it now. I was, I was catching up. I was on about 700,000 souls. He was on about 1. Point s no, I was on 800,000. He was on about 1.5. And I managed to get a lot of souls quick. I don't know how, because I didn't know any decent farming spots. But then he got away, and... Well, there you go. Okay, here, right here now, where I'm hitting these spear guys. I don't know if I do it. Okay, I do do it. Right, that's cool. It's about to explain. There's a merchant guy down here. And... If you don't want the Halberd, and you want the Drake Sword... Which I don't advise because you cannot ma get yeah, magic on the great sword, <laughs> uh, the, the the Drake sword. Sorry, um, the Drake sword. You you you, you buy a bow and arrow off this guy, and you buy about thirty arrows. But if you're not sure, get about fifty, or I think max a hundred. Thank you. <laughs> the thing is here, I just <laughs> wasted a thousand souls on buying the key, which you need by the way. But if you kill him, I keep you see this never used to happen. But if you kill him, you, you, lousy rat. you, you get. The orange soapstone, the Uchi Katana, which is a nice sword actually, and the residence key. But it never used to be like that. He never used to drop the residence key. I'm almost certain of that. Uh, and he says Yulia, Yulia. And it, whilst there's <laughs> so the Dark Souls lore is funny, some people are like, oh Yulia, it's uh, it's, it's Uchi Katana, the name of his Uchi Katana. I mean, or it's the name of a lover. Or it's the name of the merchant in the woman merchant in the sewer, or it's the name of the bucket next to him. I mean, come on, guys. We don't, we, you know, you can speculate, but the bucket next to him, really, the bucket, the bucket next to him, really. So you see how magic is pretty damn handy. The soul arrows aren't that great at the start, but they're good for the. Well, they're no, they are. They're good for this bit, but then like they really get crap very quick. Uh, this stuff's good, electrifies your weapon, makes it stronger. And this is a good shot to take these guys down. What was I saying before? Before the merchant dude. This always happens. It always happens in my videos. Well anyway, yeah, the, the drake sword, the drake sword. Yeah, you can't make it magic. So re it's strong at the, the, this stage. It gets weak very quick and it upgrades bad, it scales bad, there's no need to get it in this run through. And the halberd, the halberd is a good weapon, it is a good, it's a good weapon, especially against PV. Right, I'm going to kill this black knight, which you don't have to do, I don't do a very good job of it. I always expect the back attack to be stronger with lightning, but it just really doesn't seem to be that strong. Uh, these guys, if you've got humanity, so I'm going to refer to soft humanity as the number in the top left corner. The zero one, that's soft humanity or humanity on your body. Um, if you have humanity on your body, it uh, increases item discovery. And if you're human yourself, it increases item discovery. And these guys don't respawn. So if you want their weapons, like his weapon's pretty good. We don't need it in this, but I'm just saying his weapon is quite a good weapon. Um for like a strength build but then again pvp is kind of predictable uh, but you can only they don't respawn these guys i mean near the end there's loads of them and there's, well, there's a few of them and they respawn but that's at the end of the game by that time you know unless you go new game plus you're not interested these guys hit hard but if you're any good at parrying you should be able to beat them which i'm not i suck at parrying so i just leave it because i'll probably just die
And they're meant to be like pretty strong. So yeah, they do. I mean, I think I get a Titanite chunk from this guy, which is an upgradable thing for later, which is good actually. It's quite nice to have. Damn! Damn! Always on camera, man. You play so much better when you're not recording. But to be fair, haven't done too bad. Like, you might die a few times in this area because you don't know what's going on, which is fair enough. Hey, you can attack with your shield up with this sword as well. It's quite nice. Yeah, there's a ring. In there. it's, it's all right. It's all right for now, anyway. Thing is, we'll only really be using two or three rings throughout the entire game because one slot's going to be taken, and I'd say it's it's probably worth it to be honest. Uh, we're going to probably get Lautrec's ring for the HP, stamina, and the equipment load boost, and then pff, oh, <laughs> I need to get Havel's ring back because I gave Havel's ring away to my uh, co-op partner when I was. Find the gaping moonlit butterfly. Moonlit butterfly, yeah. Oh, there's a flaming barrel. So I'm doing a running commentary. Most people have probably played this, but you know, I won't repeat myself on what this is all about. Havel is just through the door there on the right. But there's other ways of getting to him because we picked the master key, and that's one thing I need to say. Definitely pick the master key when you play this. Otherwise, you'll be like, I can't get through this door. These guys drop some good shit. There you go. And we need we need quite a few Twinkling Titanite to upgrade a set later on. If, if that's what we're gonna, that's what I might do. I definitely want. I usually go with Ulysil's uh, headgear. Um. I get Paladin Leroy's chest plate because that's, that's a really good chest plate to be fair. Uh, a skirt, usually the blood stained, but I can't get it in this one. Uh, and then the gloves, uh, the gloves don't really matter, usually like leather or something. That makes you pretty pretty tankish though. So. But here I just chuck bombs. Terrorism. You can use the tower, I think I used the tower at least once. The bombs are good against this guy though, and he's kind of slow and predictable, but I would say, oh man, that was close. Here's the best way of killing this guy. He can hit you off the ladder, and he can also jump up the tower. There you go. Yeah, see, it is the best way, really, but sometimes it can be quite difficult because I used to just run straight back for the tower, but. Like, you can go through his legs and up the tower again if you're kind of lucky. Oh, he's a one shot, and I have no soul arrows. Oh, I'm chugging on the Estus. Am I going to get him? Oh, right trigger. As a knight, that guy took me friggin' ages, and I didn't know, and I was stupid because I wasn't using the tower either. I tell you, this game, the bosses are more interesting and dynamic than in Dark Souls 2, though I haven't completed it yet, I'm quite far, but I find that in Dark Souls 2, the gimmick is to just put the boss ah, in a small uh, room. I am so now the Whereas this game, it didn't just do that, it, did, it does other things, it, you know. I uh, just say yes to this guy, so you can get the uh, co-op. White stone, white soapstone uses for co-op. Uh, you gotta belt it. If you're too heavy, you, well, you just gotta run across this bridge. Sometimes you just take all your clothes off uh, in in the game. That is uh, to run to run across the bridge and uh, not get set on fire. Now this bit can be quite difficult. Um, here's the shortcut to the, the fire. So it's really handy. Uh, I got invaded actually 
when going to the gargoyles, which I cut out because the guy just like he he destroyed me. I'm not built for PvP. Can't roll, man. Just can't roll. So I use my souls as well. Don't I? Just, I hope I don't go. Yeah. See, see the thing is, I wouldn't bother going human in this area. I wouldn't do that. Uh, because you can get the shortcut to Filing Shrine or go to the blacksmith and you can turn human there and it's much closer to the gargoyles than this place but uh, Kindle yeah you can Kindle after, up to over 10 up to 20 after pinwheel So here I'm just going for a bit of it. Your attunement as well. That's another thing I missed out. Uh, duh. You need you need attunement. Um definitely for a mage, so you got more slots. Oh man. But uh the bit I'd say yeah, it this was trying to tell a guy, uh George, if he's uh, even watching. To go for mage if you want to quickly complete this game before Dark Souls 2, because he's getting on the PC. Which is out in a week or two. Oh, I really hate these rats, they always get me. Yes, die, bastards. Oh, he's choking! Oh shit. When you go up this ladder, if you keep going up the uh, the stairs, there's another black knight. But, like I say, I didn't really need to fight him, to be honest. And the, when you kill the boar here, he doesn't respawn. But he's weak to fire and backstabs. And there's a fiery thing there, so... These guys can be tricky if you don't have magic. He'll charge you. Get him in the fire, which I think he gets injured here. No. But you can yeah, I don't know. But backstabbing also really hurts him. Played a bit of bowling today as well. Won three games out of three. Whoop. Whoop. And played cricket in the nets for the first time ever. I'm 24. <laughs> it's fun though, actually. Just giving it a smash. But I played other sports. Just never got around to playing cricket. Don't know why. Didn't really, didn't really play it at my school, to be honest. If you run through the area with the boar, you can actually like get under the gate before it closes. But now these guys can be tricky because they do that move, and if you get stuck in it completely, it will hurt. But yeah, man, the uh, IPL that's on uh, next Wednesday, which is going to be good. Old uh, KP is going to be there. Hero. Just trying to think of other games that are coming out, man. Ah, gaming is is. I don't know, man. I was excited about too many games last year, and they were all pretty fucking bad in one way or another. <coughs> I think the surprise was. I really enjoyed the Walking Dead game. I, I didn't play it when it came out though. Uh, but I'm on season two. It's just a great game. I mean, it's dialogue heavy, obviously, but the options. Sometimes you look at the options and you go, well, they're a bit shite because you, you know, you save one guy and then later on his, his death is, his, her death is inevitable, which is a bit bollocks. 
Um, all right, here's, here's where the halberd is. Which you're going to need. And also a key that you're going to need as well. So, grab the halberd. Do I get the key? Am I retarded? Hopefully not. Nope. Oh, no. There's a key down there, man. Did I? Oh, I must get it. I must get it at some point. I think I'll get it when I... Yeah, because I get invaded here. I've cut out and I die. So I think i get it later. There, look, the door's clouded up. So I've been invaded. I've cut right where that door is. Is where the blacksmith is. And that is where the video is going to cut out to. So just remember that. You go through there. It shouldn't be white unless someone's invaded. Uh, what else? I liked... See, the thing is... I liked Bioshock Inf Infinite, but a lot of people didn't. Uh, I hated the first two Bioshocks. Or I didn't like them at all. But I played them both and I thought the enemies were repetitive. Twist was alright at the end of the first one, but they just... I didn't really like them. I loved the scenery and stuff. I don't think there was much of a connection with the main characters. Um... Oh, a good way to see if someone's invading you is this. Go to players. And it will say, most recent. Bosh, that's if you know. Although here it doesn't because it says like so many days ago. Usually it does actually say quite early when someone has invaded you. Behind that guy is a firekeeper soul. Yeah, infinite. Yeah, man, I mean... It's a good game. I liked it. Gameplay wasn't that amazing. Combat system was not that great. I know, I just... It doesn't have much replay value either, because you know what's going on. Then you could say that about films that have twists as well. So really, it's... It's really what your preference is, I guess. I'm hungry. This guy usually drops a titanite chunk of sorts, or something like that. Like I say, this is why being a mage is so good, because as soon as you're in trouble, yeah, like I said before, go through that archway and you'll be here. You can get out of trouble easy with a mage. And the light, and you can roll, as long as you don't get hit too much. Now is the time to go human when you get to this fire. Because then you can summon in Knight's Solaire. You can actually summon in Night Lord Trek as well. But after you save him. After you save him, you then have to. Um, Go back to the violent shrine, talk to him, and then he becomes an option. You can also get him to help you on the uh, the old gaping dragon. Mm, yes. Oh, here's a shortcut back to the Filing Shrine. You may as well activate this, it's quite handy. Um, those sorcerer blokes you'll see in a minute, they're actually um, see for the Dragon. They're sort of his, like, uh, what's the word? They grab, like, his victims, his next, the maidens, the fire keepers. He gets them for a. Uh, experiments 
because you find Rhea's corpse in the cells in Seep's place. I mean, there's a lot of lore to this, really. Uh, if you knew, you won't have a clue what I'm on about, but... A notorious demon. Well, maybe he, uh, you know, it's like the star sign or something. <laughs> They're just sort of demons found in the, uh, Isolith. Isolith, whatever, that place. Where it's all like things and people have been mutated by the uh, the chaos. Where uh, one of the pyro dudes tried to recreate the first flame, but fucked it up. Uh, here's a little gap you can shoot through, which is kind of handy. The sorcerer blokes, I mean, or the Pope, as uh, my mates like to call him, he can he can do some damage. His physical attack is strong, he's got high magic defense, and he can make the enemies around him stronger. But that effect, yeah I died, that's why it says retrieval. <laughs> I don't know what, I think I died by these guys actually. So retrieval is when you pick up souls, so don't worry about that. Damn. There's too many of them, Sarge. Yeah, it's a good weapon here because you can use your shield and attack at the same time. But I'm not doing much damage. It takes me a while to remember that I picked up the Halberd as well. Yeah, there's a few items around here. You may as well save. Well, no, not you may as well. You need to save Knight. Actually, Night of Trek frees himself regardless of if you save him or not, so it's not too bad. These guys can be tricky sometimes because they will parry. And they drop Titanite or uh, pieces of their armor. I think like Lord Trek, the guy you're about to find in gold, his armor just says that it's a representation of the goddess of love. I think the goddess of love or something, Fina. Uh, so he's obviously like a bit fanatical. Uh, there's not really much else on him. I, I mean, he, he kills the firekeeper if you keep him alive. Uh, which is good and bad because if you let him do that you can get his armor later on and you can bring her back anyway and you get her armor as well so it's better in the long run but we want his ring for now because it will boost us so but yeah he's uh, you just see him with a few cronies because you have to invade his world later on so I'm human at the moment and here is Summon sign for Night Slayer. And he's handy. And his background, well, there's a Sunlight Covenant, and when you win co op with him, you get a medal. And then you give so many of those to the statue where you join the Covenant, and you get a Lightning Spear, which he uses. Some people think he's like Gwyn's, one of Gwyn's sons. Uh, one of his sons is like rejected, like thrown out, cast away into oblivion. To the gates of oblivion. No, I died here. This boss battle actually isn't that hard, and you want to keep your souls as well because you need 20,000. Which I would actually say you should be saving your uh, items, item souls. If you know you're not sure about getting 20,000. Yeah, eventually, uh, Another one comes, and they can use fire, which can be a bit of a bitch. I'm surprised that hit me, actually. But it's better to kill the first one, even though the other one's weak.
Got the blue ring on there, which helps defense early on, which is nice. There goes one. The gargoyle armor and stuff is bad. And it also says that Slayer, Slayer's pretty much a badass, and it says that his armor and stuff shows no unique qualities, and he uses lightning. And Gwyn uses lightning, so. But they're just. Could be coincidence, coincidental. Because, like, there are other things about his background that don't really link him to being Gwyn's son. He's from Astora as well. But I don't know. I don't really know. I think he probably is. I think he's the closest character to being. Is he from Astora? Where does it say? I don't know if he is actually. I don't think it does say where he's from. I don't think an Oscar or the Andre. Oh, maybe it does say somewhere. Oh, I can't remember. So yeah, you ring the bell. You'd know why there was a point in ringing the bell if you don't kill the knight at the start of the game, basically, and speak to the guy in chainmail by the fire. And this guy here, if you want to be super careful, though, I don't really recommend it because you need souls. You can buy a uh, purge stone, which cures curse. And he sells them at the cheapest rate. You can use those later. Now I died here and I ran through all these little skeleton dudes so they're, they're back. And I play really bad. I'm kind of playing bad because i got so many souls and I know I need to save them. And you really do. I mean if you don't manage to, it's no big deal because we're not really leveling up that way oh, we won't be using that forest bit yet well we might not even need to use it at all I'm actually thinking we well, you know what might be safe actually I need to check oh shit I hope this guy isn't oh somebody else yeah I don't know why I went that way it's probably a reason Maybe use the other fire cube. Ah, yes, yes, of course there is. Now I'm going to kill Lord Trek. And the problem with this is you have to quit out the game sometimes to load in the equipment that he drops. You have to do that quite a few times. It can be annoying. And it can also be you don't... I mean, if you never played the game and you do something, you'll go back there much later on and be like, oh, right, shit, he's, uh, you know... Ah... And I switched to the dagger because you cannot kick with the S, S dock equipped. And we need to kick because fighting this guy he can be quite strong at this level. And his and his swords can go through shields as well. Well, what have we Oh it's fuck the kick up. Always. So he won't he won't get aggressive though unless you pummel the shit out of him so you can just kick him. Uh, I don't. Yeah, you have to quit out. Load back in to get the stuff. It kind of sucks. Yeah, I'm not really being very uh, upbeat in this commentary compared to the usual ones, but I don't know, man. I'm not. I guess I'm not really a fan of doing the commentaries anymore. I used to just talk bollocks, but I guess people kind of want to hear what they've got to do. Uh, I mean, a lot of it's self explanatory, but some of it really isn't. You get an extra, you know, fight humanity off in there, which is nice. But the thing about this ring is, if you take it off, that's it, it's broken. You can't use it again. Which does kind of suck. But we will get some more spells in a bit. Uh, also, when I got invaded, uh, the guy who killed me, he actually dropped me, like, nine Titanite shards. So that's how I managed to upgrade my halberd to plus five. But after you buy the seal 
for 20,000, and I don't mean the kiss from a rose seal. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, after you get that seal, upgrade the halberd to plus 5, and you'll notice straight away how fucking sick it is. And then I have to send this fortress so we can focus on getting into magic, which is. That's another reason you want to get the seal, is because you can get the magic ember from there. So it does help. It's probably best to get it now as well, otherwise you've got to go back and forth. Although you can teleport between fires later on. Ah, now this titanite demon down here, he can be... He can be spammed by magic in a safe, a pretty safe zone as well, so you should be fine with this guy. He's pretty strong though, to be fair. I always found him quite a bastard, because he can do a lot of damage. It takes quite a few arrows. Um, you can get safe on these steps. The best bit is when he walks over to the steps, because... Um, he just struggles. He just struggles to attack you. He just attacks the air, and you can attack underneath him. This is sort of a monotonous part. I think there's a few more sort of like <coughs> badass sub bosses in this game. I consider this guy to be a sub boss and like the Hydra. Whereas I couldn't really. I can't really think of any in Dark Souls 2 that don't respawn. There probably is loads, but I just. I've not played it enough. Maybe that's Dark Souls for you. I enjoy this game a lot and I've played a lot of it. I've played a fair bit of PvP as well, which I really enjoyed. Even though the game is pretty unbalanced, and that's not because I'm bad, Angelo, you fat cunt. It's because uh, it is massively unbalanced. I mean, like stuff like Wrath of God, Dark Bead, a lot of people will agree that they're pretty unbalanced. But hey, you know, I'm not bad at it. I win quite a lot of PvPs. But when you know. You say someone's unbalanced and some fucker who thinks they're amazing at who jerks an obby off to it thinks they're God's gift. Thinks it's not unbalanced because they're good at it. Well, it's bollocks, mate. And they've kind of, I'd say, balanced those issues out in Dark Souls 2, but then it doesn't feel as fun. I mean, I know it sounds silly and I haven't played it enough, but... So you got to have strength to pick up a shield, which makes sense, but it's really annoying because you go over Sorcerer, it just feels like a mage has been really nerfed. Well, probably quite fairly enough to be fair, because I just said it was unbalanced, but now it feels like... Then again, I don't have many good spells in Dark Souls 2, and I'm quite far, and I... It's probably because I haven't explored enough. That's probably what it's down to. Whereas this game, I pretty much know where everything is. So we're close to the 20,000 mark. And there's... Quite, we can get a good chunk. Of, you could probably farm now if you really wanted to. I mean, I've got souls here. Uh, there's a black knight at the bottom uh, in a bit. With an item by him. So it's worth... And I always say like soft humanity like I'm doing now, it's always good to get soft humanity off your body. Unless you're, you know, looking for items. Just use it on a fire. Just kindle the fire. You may as well. Saves you using it, the item form humanity. So I actually go for towards the gaping dragon next which I wouldn't recommend you'll see in the next video after this the pattern is you should probably go hydra moonlit butterfly to get out of the way otherwise you're walking around too much and they're not that strong 
Whereas the Capra Demon and Gaping Dragon, they're well, they're a lot stronger than the Hydra and the uh, the Moonlight Butterfly. It's a Moonlit Moonlight. I don't fucking know. Also, there's a little. <laughs> it's one of those lizard things down here that you can get stuff off. I miss him. I get him later. I wouldn't use the halberd. It's really hard to hit him with the halberd. Maybe I'm just being retarded, but I just could not hit him. <laughs> yeah, I was being retarded. Uh, it's leather armor, which, like I said earlier, leather gloves. Leather gloves aren't too bad. There's, there's probably better gloves, but they're good because they're light and they have a decent resistance. Uh, there's a great shield down here that boosts stamina. The crest crest shield so that's worth picking up what time is it? almost 8 it's not too bad just do a uh, yeah I didn't do a great job here I mean you can back attack these guys quite easy but if you just want to do spam him with magic then fair enough just be careful because they can run he gets, and he's got halberd, so it's a much longer range. I actually never used the Black Knight halberd. But with a mage, the thing is in this game, right, you can have some dude with a strength build, and his weapon is slow and it scales on strength, but then you can make a lot of weapons magic and it scales on intelligence. So you're doing a shitload with your, you know, technically physical attack, and you've got all this magic. Strength build is not advisable, unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, Dex build, with great scythe, that's pretty good. This is this is PV, PvP talk, bruh. So. It's not really necessary. There'll be someone in the comments, if anyone ever watches this who would say, oh man, strength build, fucking, you can get this, and, eh, uh, it's, it's not really viable, it's really not, and there you go, 20,000 souls, I'll get the shield down here first, also, the, uh, there's a cave, as I turn around, straight ahead, there's a cave there, and it goes back to the where the purple dragons were at the start. So you can get to Blight Town that way. There's a quicker way than that. Which I will be using later on. Don't know what I'm doing here. Maybe I had a text or something, I have fuck knows, but I don't know why I didn't cut this out, I probably didn't even know it was there. But I'll go to the blacksmith and get the crest. And then my, I'm actually, I might kill. I think I kill the Hydra in this bit, uh, and then the butterfly in the next clip. But I don't know, man. If anybody's watching this, they can talk about their Dark Souls two experiences. Dark Souls one. I love talking about Dark Souls one. It's a game I could, could gladly talk about, especially like the lore of it. The lore is just so open for discussion about the descriptions. Of items and how the players are linked, how the NPCs are linked. I mean, uh, even like the ending of the game, it's so ambiguous. Like you just, ah, I kind of like that. I can't, I like stories though. I love stories, but it's such a unique way in a game. Really, I mean, have you seen anything like this? There might be. So I probably missed it, but it's still a great technique. It's not lazy, I don't think it's lazy, because you still got to write the description, you still got to make sense somehow. The right trigger on this uh, halberd's pretty nice as well, it's like an arc, sweeping. The running move's nice, does a lot of damage. You want to get as many of these clumps and moss stuff as you can. If you're human, they drop the better ones. Apart from if that happens. I 
mean, it does quite a bit now, two-handed, but you'll see it. It'll be like, whoa. There's a lot of damage when you plus five it. And you could, like I said before, you could get it magic earlier, but we won't. We won't do that. We'll focus on probably saving up souls for the spells. What am I doing? I, I don't I don't usually speak as I'm playing. Though I might do that next time. Yeah, I think I will. I think I'll record voice. Yeah, I, I did actually record the next clip and it recorded uh George's voice, the guy I was co oping with, but it didn't record mine. Now if it had recorded mine that would have been a much better commentary, but instead I think I'll it's just one guy talking and you can't hear the hear the rest, so I'll probably just wipe the music clean out and um put some commentary over it. But some of my videos, because they're cut, uh, and sometimes I forget to record, only for little bits, there needs to be an explanation. So. So now I think I upgrade the Howlbird as well. Well. Yeah, it's a crest. It's also worth buying all the boxes that he sells. Because you can repair at the fire. You can reinforce at the fire. Yeah, some guy gave me nine. I mean, you, you can buy them for 800, and then you need 200 to upgrade. There is plus five. I'll probably buy the boxes and stuff off him later. I think the next thing on the agenda is the Hydra. And then the Capra. It's an odd way of doing it, but oh well. I mean, there's, there's so many ways. I remember watching one video and it was like... Everything you can do before the gargoyles. Which is a lot. To be fair. But you can also like when you get to Blight Town and you get to Ceaseless Discharge, you can actually uh get to Isleth. Which ain't bad. If you roll in the right time, right spot. I miss this again. I get it later though in my other video. <laughs> like it's ridiculous. Look at that though, that's locked on and that that's ridiculous. The Hydra is not. The Hydra only does damage at range, really. I mean, when you're up close, you've you've won the battle. It's just at range. You can sometimes hit you with a water cannon and bosh. Uh, see, I've changed. See how the roll works. Is you have a fast roll, a medium, and a fat. And I think you have to be 15% below the equipment load for the fast roll. I think something like that. You want the fast roll, really, to be honest, because then you can get away from attacks and not have to worry about your armor. Like, at the moment, there's no point in upgrading armor. Though here, I actually die. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I died. So, to be fair, that cutting was pretty awful. But you don't even have to fight these crystal golems. We will come back to these crystal golems later for blue titanite chunks. That's how get a magic weapon. But they get killed from the Hydra's water cannon. If you're, you know, quick enough. And as soon as you get into the water. Huh, it's behind a rock then. As soon as you get into the water, he usually stops his water cannon. He'll stop it now. There's a starting up equipment for the night. There you go, and then you can jab away at his heads. That's pretty much the tactic, to be honest. And I upgraded the halberd, so I'll be doing quite a bit. Problem with it is his last head is programmed to be a fucking bastard. It's really hard to hit. So it's kind of useful to have a bow and arrow 
or use you can use magic but not lock on you have to use it not locked on oh yeah see sometimes if you go out to the grass you will use that cannon the best thing is to stay on the grass like you know keep moving keep moving around and then because you've got faster movement obviously on the grass and you have having water oh that's bad I think the problem with the halberd is if you miss it takes a lot longer to recover and people I mean like real players could round you very easily when you miss. Even with the halberd it's a hard PvP weapon. <laughs> Shit, I actually got it. So left two heads left, three heads? Two heads. This is quite an easy it's a sub boss, but it's worth taking out. Um, actually, I think you know you need to take out what I'm about to do. See now, it's hard because his head doesn't lock onto you. It tries to lure you into. There's a pit, just just there. There's just a pit in front of him which can kill you. You can walk off and die. And the frame, the frame, like the frame rate on its animation, it, it just looks really jitterish. It's kind of weird. There is another Hydra in the game. Uh, it's an area I'm not going to go to, but I will show you how to get to it. Because it's a bastard. It's an absolute bastard of an area. And it doesn't really have much that you need. The ring you got then, it's not really worth it. So I think I go for the Brave Warrior Soul, which is worth a lot. I think it's worth 5k souls. Uh, it's just it's up to the ladder. This is this is basically the back route into the uh, the forest, but the crest is a lot better because you're by a fire. I mean, take you fucking ages to keep doing it this way. But we'll go in the forest later. Like I say, I need that ember at some point, and when I get there, I'll demonstrate the route that you take to. Um, basically farm very quick and get like 7,000 souls in a minute maybe less I don't know but it's so handy I'd say you don't need to get this soul but it's kind of we just you know probably run up the ladder get that and it's quicker than getting the amount of souls obviously apart from going in that forest so the next item we're going to get is actually really handy um, so you have to you have to kill this gold golem which sometimes doesn't load it loads after the hydra but it might not so you have to save and quit come back in it loads and basically a woman comes out of it and you talk to her then you summon her you kill her and you go back to this spot and she her dead body's there. The thing is about this game is the dead bodies of characters that you speak to, they, they show up in some odd places, but I like that because you think, well, the timeline is convoluted. Uh, I've quit because the golem's not there. Like, you know, like Leroy dies by Neo. So Leroy got to Neo before, you know, he was there for the way of the white, this sort of deluded religious sect that and they gave him all this all these decent weapons and stuff to you know to go kill this darkness and this lord of death and for his power for the right of kindling uh, actually you know I might even link in the description the story I did the fanfic I did about it cuz I thought it was it was quite good um I like Leroy he was he had some sick armor so but I just like that. I just like that. Oh shit! You you almost feel like oh he went all that way for nothing. Also, oh, fucking hell! Magic defense on these guys is friggin' high. So the best thing is just going with a halberd. Their attack damage is also friggin' high. But 
and you can't move as quick in water. But if you do what I do, and you stay to the left, you can still run it and move at normal speed, which is nice, but just not in the water. You do get a ring later where you can move faster in water, but you won't really need it because. Oh, that's a friggin' Mike Tyson uppercut. Oh, <laughs> look at that again. You won't really need the ring because there's only Blight Town. Uh, what else? Oh, probably just pretty much Blight Town that you need it. There's a woman. So, I can't. You don't kill her. Can you? You know what? You probably could just kill her there. And you'd be fine. Yeah, you probably could just get her there to be fair. I don't know why I never figured that out before, but I I go all the way over here, I summon her, and then I kill her, and then I run back. I don't know why. A little waste of time, but hey. Um, she's kind of linked to the DLC, um, where she's from, and our tour. Now I swear, right on the Xbox 360 version, that her summon sign is by that rock there on the right, in front of it. But on the PC version, it's there. It's kind of weird. Maybe I'm wrong, but. And our Taurus is uh, he goes to Ulus. Yeah, he goes to Ulus Hill. And he like gets taken over by the abyss, the darkness. If there were to. Which is like Ma Manus. People think Manus is like what does thou? the the pygmy, the furtive pygmy, like the human that gets one of the dude gets the dark soul. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I don't really want to say some people aren't interested in the story. Some people I was playing with one guy and he's like, "There's no story." I was like, "Damn!" I mean. There isn't a direct story, but it's good. Just look at the item descriptions. Use your creative imagination. Be pretentious. Dance with wolves. Run with eagles. Eagles fly. <laughs> Pray with mantises. I don't fucking know. If you have an imagination, you may enjoy it. Oh, shit. If your imagination is fucking Disney characters, you probably won't enjoy this. <laughs> oh shit, that's a nod towards uh, someone I know. Oh. Now, boom. This is a light headgear. And not only is it a light headgear, it boosts magic attack. Boyakasha! And it makes you, like, your magic defense go down. But because enemies, PvE, or oh, player versus enemies, doesn't really use magic attack, you'll be fine. <clears throat> you'll be damn fine. And hell, I use this friggin' helmet in PvP. So next is the... Uh Cap redeemed. See now I think I'm going to get the key. Yes, I am. If I'd have missed this key I'd have raged, but this is a key you need to get to the Cap Redeemon. I mean essentially you could skip these Yeah, you could skip these bosses and go straight to Blight Town. But... Oh no, my the, the key's there on that dead body that I just ran past by that night. Undead night. So you need that key. Um so I'm going to where you... Yeah, you don't need to kill these two. Because you can get to Blight Town if you have the Master Key. And even if you don't have the Master Key, you can do it. Oh yeah, I died there, so I... Really good editing. Good chop... Chopping. Chopin. Chopping. Yeah, that guy, I think he... I think I got stuck between him and some rats. Which is probably worse than him and a hard place. Giant worm! So. <laughs> Dom, I hear something. <laughs> I want to find Maria, Marcus. A giant worm! I hope. Yeah, yeah, I definitely go to the place. Yeah. This is a place where all the junkies go. 
Bing, bing. Oh, I'm drifting off. Floating and fading away. So you have to run back across this goddamn bridge. I tell you, that dragon is one of the most annoying things to fight in this game. Because it can just one-shot you, no matter how high your fire defense is. Man, it sucks. And you can also create a shortcut to the, the fire that I just came from, which is nice. That's what I like about Dark Souls. Everything connects with these shortcuts, these interlinking shortcuts. My mate, he doesn't like that you can teleport between fires right at the start. Which I, I, I kind of agree in a weird way. I mean, you, getting teleport earlier was nice because then you could appreciate all these shortcuts and the level design. All the level designs. So I love this bit. This bit is a great great bit of gaming level design because it, it just has everything it has all these random items it looks nice it has it's almost maze like um, this is great great piece of level design there well done from software I also like it because it kind of shows the sort of medieval aspect quite a lot yeah these dogs suck so the residence key opens up this door down here to a sorcerer and you want to save him because he gets you better spells instead of goddamn soul arrows uh, you get the you get his kit in there really which isn't that great it's just like black sorcerer is it black oh no it's not black you can can you get better I'm pretty sure you can get a black sorcerer kit but So you can get a black sorcerer kit, but can you get a white sorcerer kit? No. Racism. Wow. These uh, flame zombies, they can do a lot of damage if you're not careful. The cat redeemon can be a very difficult boss. The best thing is to seclude him from the dogs, kill the dogs when you go up the stairs, give him a swift jab, and then... Yeah, destroy that for no apparent reason. Um, and then you can you can do you can actually do drop down attacks on the cat redeemon as well. Or because we're mage, you can run up the stairs and hit him. These ninjas though, they can they can actually uh, they can back attack you. So you gotta be careful about that. Yeah, the cat. Yeah, the cat redeeming. Though I will say, I feel like physical does a bit more. The, the, my God, because it's a small area, it's worth doing physical. But he he has a high attack, but he has a friggin' low defense. That guy. I would recommend getting the halberd to plus five. Um, farming for the souls that you need. Using the Brave Knight Soul. All those souls before Ulusil. That's quite a lot of souls. Instead of leveling up, you can just get this to plus five. It's worth doing. Because it is strong. The black leather stuff's not too bad. You want to be as light as possible, but with good defense. Yeah, this boss, he can jump you pretty quick if you're not sure, you know. The best thing is to run up to the left. But just get those dogs. There goes one. Where is the other? That's weird. Oh, he's down there. See there? You can actually, if now you run up the stairs quickly, you can jump down and do a one of those two-handed hits on him. Almost, see, magic doesn't do that much to him. I mean, actually, I don't know, it kind of adds up, really. But he hits hard. Boy, especially when he hits with, like, both his axes. See? Oh, two-fisted monkey style. Oh, he missed. See, the attack's doing more. Uh, and now I'm in a corner with him, which is not fun, but he's missed a lot. Oh. Yeah, that's, don't get in a corner with him. And he just swings. 
He does. Yeah, he, he can hit you hard. But if you're two-handed, it's even better with the halberd. He can be troublesome. I found him really difficult when I was a knight because I was slow as well. And the thing is, with a knight and uh, my mate Alan, he's playing as a knight with Dark Souls too. He hasn't learned from uh, this game. He's like, well, you still, you may have heavy armor, but you still seem to take a lot of shit. And it kind of sucks. Because that's what a knight is. You're meant to tank. You know, you're meant to feel like you're a friggin' hero. But oh well. So now we go up here to uh, show you where the merchant is. Yulia. <laughs> Not. Um and open up a shortcut to Filing Shrine, which is handy. Um, I save my souls. The, the problem is, if you go this way and you fight Gaping Dragon, it's probably a good idea to save some souls. Ah, no, I go get magic now, because I've saved that sorcerer bloke. And he sells some good shit. It's worth... This ring costs 20,000 to boost magic attack. It's definitely worth getting if you've got that amount, but then you won't get any. See, is it? It depends. It really depends on how many souls you have. Oh, that could have been bad. I'm going to die. Oh, man, I did not know that happened. That, that kind of sucks. Oh, that was rape. Oh, that's right, I'm back here. Um, because he sells soul arrows that are much better and you're going to want them for gaping dragon especially so I would save the sorcerer's ring that boosts attack damage or magic damage magic attack damage whatever the fuck for, for later uh, Havel's ring is what we want and I get it and I, and I give it away but I'm going to get it back at some point from somebody else so it means you can actually wear heavier armor have a higher defense and still have a quick roll, which is really nice. And there's my souls, thank fuck. I think I'll just ignore these feckers. Thing is, if you do this, just be careful they don't run down and like be the shell of the mage, because you need him. Oh hello. I regret at least. See his backstory is that he's like more of like a spy for is it Vin Vinhelm, the the, the magic oh, school, and he's like Logan has been using magic to create dodgy magic basically. Uh, I like Logan; he's pretty sound. But there's some people like well, he could be like a spy. He's wearing black man. Oh, she is a spy. Damn! Might steal off Logan. Damn! <laughs> but uh. Nah, he, he's like following Logan to learn his... He could even be just an apprentice, like proper right. sorcerer apprentice. Do it. Um, just trying to follow Logan's way. That's what I always thought, but some people think it's deeper than that. Because of the spells he sells. and I'd read the lore on it. I'm, uh, I can't explain it as well because I don't know it that much. Um, but that he's like a sneaky bastard trying to... Spy on Logan, basically. We need Logan later because he sells some proper bangings magic. Not like this can. Did you see? The see, yeah, you wanna? He's talking some bullshit. What have we got? I got something earlier. I got. Yeah, just get all the arrows, hmm? basically. What's that? Ditch the ring for now. See, this is where we want to start banging out a tumen. Only ever, I think, only ever level up a tumen when you actually need it. Otherwise, it's pointless. Which sounds obvious, but you know, come on. So now we've got some more spells. We will go down into the depths. Yeah. 
To be fair, in this bit, I'm just going to show you where the fire is. Uh, the, the, the Gaping Dragon would be the next playthrough. No. Oh. Also, the problem with the next playthrough is I don't explore the depths and... Um, I don't show you how you get the shortcut to the boss. So basically, just explore that area. Now, it can be a bastard of an area because of the basilisks which can curse you. So I would look on... I know I'm promoting someone else's videos. Oh my god, I really don't give a shit. Watch somebody else's video to see how to get... Open up the shortcut for the boss. Because I don't do it. I don't know why I didn't record that. Um, oh well. There is an easy way where you can miss the basilisks to open up the shortcut as well. But it's worth opening up the shortcut, otherwise you have to, obviously, if you die from the gaping dragon, you have to go all the way through. Also, I use co-op. If you don't want to use co-op, that's, that's sound like just summon Knight Solaire, and he basically tanks for you. Just remember you have to turn human. And when you're exploring, I would be human, because you can summon Kirk, and he gives you like 6,000 souls, and he's just a NPC. Vader. Just don't be surprised when you see like you have been invaded and be like what? You can kind of tell when it's not a human because most human players have like XXX or it's fucking hammer time. I'm gonna snipe your ball sack. I have no idea. Why not? These guys can be a bit mental. Apparently they are women. In the uh, Dark Souls interview, they were like, "Yeah, they're women." And oh, here's the guy for the pyromancy. If you're interested, the cool thing about pyromancy is it's it levels up on just souls and not like intelligence or you know vit or faith or anything like that. You can just upgrade your your uh, pyro hand with souls. You got pyromancy, but it takes up attunement, and pyromancy is. Kind of, it's good against PVE, but it's not amazing against um, player versus player. It's too predictable. It's too slow. But PVE can be good. Oh, I, I wouldn't use it though. I'd just use magic. It's, it's Freaking dog! Look at him. It's crazy. God, I can't believe I've been talking for an hour and twenty on just the play-by-play -play of this. <laughs> Damn! In that box is um upgrade. Yeah, great heavy soul arrow takes friggin' donkeys to fire. Uh, it's a it's a large titanite shard, but we we don't really need it. Magic is the one we need, which I'll show you later. Like I say, though, I'm going through this f pretty damn. Uh, pretty damn quick. There's no need to rush past everything. Showing you a healthy portion of the game. But yeah, I'd explore this area because I don't in my video. There's not. The thing is, there's nothing amazing down here, really. So just look up for the shortcut and that'll do you good. Otherwise, you will get cursed if you're unlucky and that will really fuck you over because it like permanent. Permanent, well not permanently, but it halves your health until you cure it. And you need a purge stone from the guy in the gargoyle bell tower. There's a thing that drops down. Yeah, these things take a lot of shit. But they don't really do anything, apart from fall on you and hurt you when they fall on you. Damn! See, I always think running down the right is safe, but it might be the left. Because these things hurt, man. Jesus. They can almost kill you. You can actually 
use uh, where we killed that other chef by the box with the sh with the um, ember in. You can jump down there, but then you'll miss this fire, and you're going to want this fire. So this is the best way to go. And that's it. I'll talk more on the next video.